This project starts with this 3D embossing folder. This is a uh, Sizzix 3D Texture Fade by Tim Holtz, and it is called Typeset, I think. I will verify the name. Oh, Typewriter. Typewriter? And today is embossing some black cardstock. This is a technique that I have not tried before, so we'll see how it turns out, but First, uh, because there are so many different levels of, of um, embossing here, I like to use a tiny bit of water. This is just a water spray bottle that I got in a two-pack at Dollar Tree, and I just spray the uh, paper a couple times, set it in, and close it, and you just emboss like normal. And the water just helps it not crack. Um, if you've used really thick paper before in an embossing folder or um, some like heavy textured stuff, sometimes uh, you send it through the machine and it cracks the paper. I'm just going to take this over to my Gemini and run it through. So I am working in a cardboard box. It is my version of the splat box, but basically it is... Um, something that I just had on hand when I started using the sprays and it works for me. Um, I usually put a piece of blank paper behind um, in the upright position to catch any overspray just in case um, it looks nice and I can use it on another project. Okay, so the majority of the gunk has left the bottom and mixed up into um, the bottle. I am going to do just a few sprays and see what kind of coverage I get and how it looks. I'm gonna spray from off of the camera, of course, because I want it um, about six inches away. And I'm not spraying down, I'm spraying out so that whatever falls is what I'm gonna get on the paper. So this is an opaque metallic. Um, I think the metallic is what makes it opaque uh, it is pretty shimmery, but of course the shimmer shows up a lot better once it's dried. I am going to use my um, heat tool just to, um, and I'm actually using an embossing gun, so uh, I'm just going to hold it off here and heat it up and then heat and dry this off really quick. So I'm going to continue to work in my splat box just in case I want to add more of that metallic color. Um, I am now using a little bit of distressed paint in salvage patina and I have a little brush here. I don't know a lot about brushes. I just know that this is one that was in my stash and it has a crown on it. <laughs> so I am I think going to probably um, wet this down just a little bit and dry brush it, but let's see what the consistency is first. So it just took me like a full day and a half to get the um, most of the plastic off of this container, but um, there is some paint here, and so I am just going to be dainty about it and smash it down here. Um, it is pretty thick. So I think I'm going to um, get better, uh, I'm gonna have better control the thicker the, the paint is. So I am just going to, for now, 
just kind of get into some of these areas. I'm not gonna do the whole thing. And I think after my next step, it might be kind of easier to see what I'm going after. So I wanna make sure that I don't get a bunch of paint on the top of these embossed letters because I want them to look black as if they were picking up ink like a normal typewriter would or a typewriter would. <laughs> so there's some in some of those areas, but just trying to not have big chunks of the color on top. using like the tiniest bit of water to get some of that off. It's also taking some of the metallic off the top of those letters, which is fine. Fine with me. So of course, this is dry now. No, nope, almost. I'm just going to get in some other areas here. Throw down just a tiny bit more paint. And I'm just kind of going in every so often. Putting down a bit more color. And I'm going to wipe some of that off as well. Of course, like I said, this is the first time I'm doing this technique, and so I'm not really sure. I really feel like I'm just kind of playing at this point. And I am going to add one other layer of color, so maybe it'll come together just a little bit more. Smashed it. Okay. So for my last layer of color, I am going to use, well, I think it's my last layer, unless I feel like I need to put more of that metallic spray on there, but I'm going in with a Distress Crayon, and this is a silver one. It is called Brushed Pewter, sorry. And so this uh, crayon I can smudge and it's also water reactive. So I'm just gonna kind of play around a little bit and, and see what happens as I lay some of this color down. And then I might try also um, dry brushing some of it on. So this is a this brush is still a little damp because I just um, I just rinsed it. I rinsed the paint off of it just a minute ago. So just kind of kind of get into some of the. 
crevices here. So I didn't want to use a lot of water because I know that it will react, but I just want to kind of move it around just a little bit more here, just a little bit. So I just sprayed with my water bottle a tiny bit of water on my makeshift palette and um, kind of working it in here. Here is the completed, dried, um, embossed, painted, inked, and crayoned um, background that I have for this card. This project is part of Embossing Folder Fridays. This is a hop that is uh, once a month where we highlight embossing folders and embossing folder techniques. It is uh, coordinated in the Handmade Happiness Facebook group and it is open if you would like to participate. Um, you will find the information below. Each month we have a different theme and we post the second Friday of the month. Don't forget to tap on the EFF March 2023 hashtag that you'll find um, highlighted in my description uh, and underneath the video. And you will see um, all of the other participants of this month's hop. So I just grabbed a few things. I'm, of course, using this embossing folder that's a typewriter. And I knew that there was some ephemera in some of the Tim Holtz line that I that had typewriter um, imagery in it or um, old, uh, just little signage and things that I might like to use. First thing I found was this cute little one that has a, um, standard Remington standard typewriter on um, just like an advertisement. And then I found some flashcards and some other things. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this together and I might um, speed it up a little bit just in case it takes me a minute. I am using this uh, tape. This is a half inch, no, whoa. This is an eighth of an inch um, double-sided tape that has the backing on it. So I'm gonna um, start using up some of my supplies. I know that some supplies, um, you know, don't really get old, but last week I killed a couple of um, little bottles of some pink fresh, like a glitter paste. And, and I, it was, it was nearly dried out. So I just grabbed a bunch of, um, of card panels and just started using it up with different stencils just so it didn't go to waste. And so now I have some backgrounds that are set aside. So anyway, story. I am trying to use up some of the older uh, 
supplies that I have in my stash that I think might um, either get old, dry out, or wear away over time. So I'm going to use this today um, as much as possible. I don't know if then I'll need something else, but if I need a wet glue, I'll grab that.
So here's my card. I ended up uh, cutting off the little seal just because I didn't like um, how round it was compared to everything else. So I uh, kind of like the way it turned out. I'm not awesome at um, kind of collaging mixed media stuff, but I think that the way I put these things together really tells a story. Story. Thanks for joining me for another video. I appreciate all of your support. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to check out the other participants in this hop by clicking on the hashtag.